As you're turning to Matthew chapter 14, I'm thankful for, for Dave and for the partnership over all these years. It was actually 16 years ago, November, that we met in a living room and I cast vision for what the Lord was calling us into. Of course, all these years later, not knowing what it really looked like other than what we sang, that Jesus changes everything, that lives are changed by the power of King Jesus. That was our prayer, continues to be our prayer, will continue to be our prayer and why we uh, plow and will continue to plow the fields for King Jesus. Amen. Last week, Pastor Mike continued the teaching series with part three of ministry. Welcome to the mess. It's, it's our prayer and it's really our hope that as we study the word of God together, we, we learn from the best leader. And it's Jesus. Uh, he's teaching his disciples. He's instructing his disciples. He and his disciples are going throughout the regions. Proclaiming this message of repentance. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. And so it's, it's our prayer that as we continue to study through the gospel of Matthew. That we will see that ministry is indeed messy. Because lives are messy. Last week I had the privilege of. Traveling all throughout Connecticut to look pastors in their eyes and say, keep on going. That there are churches in Florida that believe in you, that stand with you, and want to partner with you. Pastor Riley of Green Valley Crossing asked me to preach a message on the subject of a healthy church is driven by healthy relationships. He asked me to preach a message on how do we deal with conflict and I was glad to preach that message, especially in a church that, well, I left after I preached the message. And uh, he called me on Tuesday and he said, man, I, I'll tell you what, since that message, I've been dealing with conflict after conflict after conflict. The Lord is moving. The Lord is moving. He certainly stirred something up. And it's just a reminder that life is, is messy. And oftentimes we want to run from the conflict or we want to brush the conflict you know, under the carpet and ask, act as if it's not there. But life is messy because our lives are messy. This world is messy. But in the midst of it is Jesus who has come to save sinners like me and you. To give us a living hope. And a glorious one in heaven one day. Amen. Last week, Pastor Mike, whom I'm so thankful for him and Sue and their ministry to this church. He's been with us, served with us now for 12 years. Just a little over 12 years. And I'm thankful for, for all that they, they, they do really behind the scenes even. But last week, he led us through a text in Matthew 14 about little faith. Really, it started out with great faith because Peter called out to Jesus and Pete, Jesus says, step over the boat. And, and so you know the story. If you were raised in church or maybe you're hearing it for the first time today. Peter steps outside and begins to walk on water. Don't miss the Greek language, the original language. It tells us that Peter actually is walking on water but also don't miss the fact that as long as his eyes are kept on Jesus, he's experiencing the supernatural power of God. But the moment the storms started to circulate, he took his eyes off of Jesus. He begins to sink. And isn't that our Savior? Every time we take our eyes off of him, he's there to reach down with great compassion, great mercy, Puts Peter back in the boat. But then he says, oh, you of little faith. That was last week, little faith. Today, we're looking at what great faith looks like. What great faith looks like. And so Matthew chapter 14, beginning in verse 34. When they crossed over, they came to shore at Gennesaret. Gennesaret, when they crossed over. They're on the, the east side of the Sea of Galilee. And that east side was known to be a side that the Jewish people did not live, did not even go. 
It's a Gentile area. It's a pagan area on the east side of the Sea of Galilee. And, and Matthew's account tells us that they crossed over from the northeast side to the northwest side of the Sea of Galilee, verse 35, when the men of that place recognized him, they alerted the whole vicinity and brought to him all who were sick. They begged him that they might only touch the end of his robe, and as many as touched it were healed. The main idea today is this, great faith may be found in the most unexpected places. Great faith may be found in the most unexpected places. Places. They crossed over from the east to the west. The word got out that that's where Jesus was. And what does the text teach us? They begged him that they might only touch the end of his robe. I mean, allow that to just kind of marinate for a moment. To just touch the end of his robe. And Jesus didn't even have to do anything. Not one thing, but just one touch of the Savior, these people were healed. One touch, one touch. I wonder today, who or what are you reaching after? Who or what are you reaching towards for just that one touch of healing, for that one touch of power, for that one touch of hope? Who's the, who or what are you reaching after? My prayer would be that we would be encouraged, the people of God, that we would be reminded that all authority and all power is in one person. It's not you, and it's not me, and it's not that other person, and it's not the, e e even the, the, the one you know, just elected. It's in the, the living God, King Jesus, who rules and reigns over the universe. These people, they knew there was something special about Jesus. There was some, some power, supernatural power about Jesus. And if they could just touch the end of his robe, they would be healed. And so they do just that. And their lives are changed from that day forward by just one touch. Another question I would challenge us to consider is how often do we rely on our, our power? How often do we rely on our power rather than reaching out for just that one touch of his power? How often do we say, maybe not with our mouths, but with our lives, God, you can sit this one out, I got it. <laughs> and, and how often does, uh, does that situation not turn out for the best. <laughs> and we're quickly reminded, no, I need the power of God every moment of every day. I'm thankful for the text in Acts that reminds us that in him we live, move, and exist. We have our being in him. It's in Christ Jesus alone, the source of all power, the source of all authority. Would you turn to chapter 15, verse 21? We're going to look at a, a, another Another account of great faith. Next week we'll come back to the, to the beginning of, of chapter 15 as we continue to study through the gospel of, of Matthew. But Matthew chapter 15, beginning in verse 21. When Jesus left there, he withdrew to the area of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from the region came and kept crying out, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely tormented by a demon. Now, pause for the context because context is so important as we study the word of God. Tyre and Sidon, uh, Sidon were Gentile cities. It's modern day Lebanon. The Jewish people would not have gone to such a place. This is 50 miles away, 50 miles north. Uh, the Jewish historian Josephus said this, the, the Tyrians, the Tyrians, the people of Tyre, have the most ill feeling towards us. There was a deep conflict that 
well, you know if you have turned on any kind of news, remains even still today. And so Jesus is really in the most unlikely of places as he withdrew to visit Tyre and Sidon. It was unlikely for Jesus to be in such a region as Tyre and Sidon. Verse 22 tells us that this Gentile woman, and if you recall as we've studied the scriptures, we've referenced this time and time again, but uh, the gospel teaches us that it is for the first the Jew and then the Gentile. And so if you're not a, of Jewish heritage, well, then you're a Gentile. It's kind of that simple to, to wrap our minds around. But this Gentile woman in a foreign land understood who Jesus was. Many of Jesus' own people didn't even understand who he was. But this woman of Canaan knew who Jesus was. Jesus went all the way north to meet this one woman's need. And I wonder what is your need today? What is your need? This woman's need. Oh, the, the need of a mother. Looking at her daughter, severely tormented by demons. Great care and compassion would flood you, mothers. her faith was great because it was unlikely. No one might have expected a Gentile to trust Jesus so much. So she cries out to, to Jesus, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely tormented by a demon. Verse 23 Jesus did not say a word to her. His disciples approached him and urged him, send her away because she's crying out after us. What a response. Here's this woman who comes to Jesus with such a great need and such a great burden. I mean, it's right here. It's not like the needs down the street. It's in her home. And she's crying out to Jesus. We're going to see she's a woman of great faith in Jesus. She knows the power of Jesus. In verse 23, Jesus did not say a word to her. I wonder what the first thought in her mind, as I'm sure she would have expected something from Jesus. Why do I know that? Because every time I say something to Jesus, I expect something. And be honest, every time you say something to Jesus, you expect something. You expect some kind of response. But in this moment, in this moment, there was no response. No response. Augustine said, says, said this about verse 23. The word spoke not a word. And that was so unlike him. The word, that is Jesus, spoke not a word. And that was so unlike him. But her faith, this woman's faith, it was great because it had been tested. It was great because it had been tested. This is the first response. Jesus, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. This is her, her, her first response. And then Jesus does not respond. And to top it off, here are the disciples gathering in their, you know, their huddle or whatever it looked at like that day. And, and I can just imagine, here's the lady crying out to Jesus with this great burden, with this great need. Here's the disciples coming around with another brilliant idea. We've seen, this isn't the first time they've said, let's just send people away. But yet the woman remained with a great faith. 
stood strong with a great faith. How do we grow in great faith? I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you in the three areas today, all of us, starting with me. How do we grow in great faith? How do we become people of great faith? The first would be pray. Would you write that down? Pray. How do we grow in great faith? Church, hear me clearly. Continue to pray even when you don't feel like it. Continue to pray even when you don't feel like it. There's a whole lot of moments in life, they praise God, they, they come and go, although when you're in the middle of it, you think it's never going to go. But we're just walking through the, the valley of the shadow of, of death, praise God, we're just walking through. The enemy would, would cause us to be so overcome by, by fear, grippled and paralyzed by, by, by fear. We just don't want to pray anymore. Can I encourage you, if you want to grow in great faith, pray. Continue to pray. Continue to pray even when you don't feel like it. Verse 24, Matthew 15, does he reply, this was his reply, after he doesn't have a reply. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is his reply, of course, to the disciples. Verse 25, but she came, knelt before him and said, Lord, help me. He answered, verse 26, it isn't right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Verse 25, we, we see that this woman comes and she kneels down before him. She kneels down before him. She, she, she worships him and, and then she, she cries this out, Lord, help me me. Lord, help me. Notice she did not pray, Lord, help my daughter. But what does she cry out? Lord, help me. Lord, help me. If we're going to continue to grow in faith, we need to be people of prayer. We need to be people of prayer. Romans 12, 12, would you write this reference down? It says this, rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, be persistent in prayer. Are you a person of prayer? If you want to grow in great faith, continue to pray even when you don't feel like it. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 tells us pray constantly. Hold on to that scripture. It's only two words. It's easy. Pray constantly. When you don't want to pray, when you don't feel like praying, when nothing is going right, pray Pray constantly. Colossians 4.2. Write that reference down. Colossians 4.2 says this. Devote yourselves to prayer. What? what? To, to problem solving? To, you know, no, to prayer. To, to more projects? No, prayer. Devote yourself to prayer. Stay alert in it with thanksgiving. Devote yourselves. Be devoted to prayer. Spurgeon said this. If you have no prayer... You have no faith. You have no prayer. You have no faith. How do, we, how do we grow in great faith? Continue to pray. Secondly, would you write this word down? Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. How, how do we grow in great faith? Continue to praise Jesus even when you don't feel like it. Continue to praise him. Even when you don't feel like it, the temptation is to do anything but praise him. In the midst of the, the challenges of, of life and, and, and the defeats of life and the valleys of life, the temptation is to not pray and it's to not praise him. But I would challenge you. That's what the enemy wants you to, to, to think. That's where he wants you. That's one of his plans, his tactics. But continue to praise Jesus even when you don't feel like it. But she came, verse 25, she came, knelt down, knelt before him and said, Lord, help me. 
He answered, it it isn't right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. What is Jesus talking about here? He's already referred to, uh, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then he talks about the the, the, the crumbs. She's going to refer to the the crumbs. We're we're like the the, the crumbs. Yes, Lord, verse uh, 27. Yes, Lord, she said. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. She's referring to, I know who I am. I know I'm a Canaanite woman. I know I'm a Gentile. I know I live in a pagan land. I know you've come for the house of, of Israel. That is the Jew first. But, but, but then what a look into what Jesus is about to accomplish on the cross for all humanity. And this woman with great faith. Great faith. And she says in verse 27, yes, Lord, she said, yet even. I don't want you to miss those two words. We would generally just blow right by them. But what faith-filled words, yet even. I I, I know, I know you haven't come for the Canaanites, people. I I know that that who I am, but, but I have great faith in who you are, yet even. In Acts chapter 16, verse 25, We see uh, Paul and Silas are in jail. They've been ministering the gospel, spreading the gospel, preaching the gospel faithfully. And as a result, it landed them in jail. They've been arrested and not just arrested, but they've been beaten. They've been beaten and not just beaten, but they've been thrown in jail. Here they are arrested and beaten. They're tired. Look at verse 25 of chapter 16. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. And singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. What is Paul? Well, what, are, what are Paul and Silas doing? As as they're in jail, I mean, they could be they could be crying. They you know they could have the the the, the biggest pity party you've ever been a part of. They could feel defeated. But what are they doing? They're praying, and they're praising. They're praying. And they're praising. They are still being a witness. Even in the darkest of places, they remain faithful to be the witness that God had called them to be. They're praying and they're praising. And you continue to read that chapter. You see the the floodgates of God uh, open wide open. The the, the gates are wide open only for, for the Lord Jesus to be glorified. How do we grow in great faith? We continue to praise Jesus even when we don't feel like it. This woman's faith was great. It was great because it concerned a real need right in front of her. Many people have faith for everything except those things that are right in front of them. I wonder, how has God come through for you? How has God blessed you? How has he provided for you right here, right now? How do we grow in great faith? We continue to pray even when we don't feel like it. We continue to praise Jesus even when we don't feel like it. And lastly, would you write this down? Is persevere. Continue to persevere in the faith even when you don't feel like it. Persevere even when you don't feel like it, persevere. This is the third time that this woman has come back to Jesus. The first time she is, she hears nothing. The first time there's no response, but she continued to come back to Jesus. She continued to come back to Jesus. Verse 28, then Jesus replied to her, woman, your faith is great. Let it be done for you as you want. And from that moment, do you see it in the text? And from that moment, her daughter was healed. From that moment, woman, your faith is great. From that moment, her daughter was healed. How do we grow in great faith? Continue to persevere in the faith even when you don't feel like it. 
Her faith was great because she wouldn't give up. Her faith was great because she wouldn't give up. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9, would you write this reference down? It says, let us not get tired of doing good for we will reap at the proper time if we don't give up. If we don't give up. I wonder how many people are right on that line. You're right on that line. You're, you're wanting to give up. But you just need to be encouraged by the word of the Lord today to say keep on persevering. Don't give up. You keep on fighting. You continue to pray. You continue to praise. You continue to persevere. Great faith may be found in unexpected places. We see in Matthew chapter 8 that Jesus has this encounter with this Roman centurion. I mean, it was this man that was participating in the oppression of the Jewish people. And what does Jesus say to him? I have not seen a great faith in all of Israel. And that man was used by God for his whole household to come to God. We, 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 see, we see all the way up in that Lebanon region. that here's this Gentile woman who continues to come back to Jesus, come back to Jesus, come back to Jesus, continue to persevere. And what does Jesus tell her? Woman, your faith is great. Your faith is great. Listen, great power is available in the most unexpected places. You saw it in the beginning, chapter 14. At the end of his robe, there was great power. And by the way, it had nothing to do with the robe. It had everything to do with who was wearing the robe. But there was great power. There was great power at the end of the robe. Great power is available in the most unexpected places. Not only in the, the end of this, this robe, but even in a foreign land. Just as Jesus traveled to a foreign land, listen church, may we be faithful to go wherever he calls us. May you and I be faithful to go wherever he calls you. I wonder where Jesus is calling you. I wonder where Jesus is calling you. Some of you have already made plans or already decided to avoid certain people because Thanksgiving's coming and last year this thing all happened. You, you, you know what I'm talking about, but where is Jesus calling you to go? Where is Jesus calling you to go? Some of you, there's a call in your life. There's a call in your life. You, you've heard th that we get the opportunity to step into three different local schools right here but you're making every excuse in the world as to why you can't step into the schools. Where is the Lord calling you? Where is he stirring within you to serve the king, to make him known? Do you have great faith? Uh, this woman had, was great, had great faith. Even compared to her other virtues. Listen, we, 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 we read the text. You can see it before you. That there's a humility in this woman. She was patient. She certainly cared for her child. She was compassionate. Yet Jesus didn't compliment any of these good things. But only her great faith. I wonder today, do you have great faith? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes all across this place, online with us? Do you have great faith? I wonder what your response is today. For a moment, would you just consider, well, what is your response? What is your response to what, what you've heard through song and through message? What is your response? What will you do with this today? As people are praying all across this place, people are praying online with us. I wonder if there's one that's never surrendered over to the Lord Jesus. Ah, we just celebrated a young man taking that step of faith this week.
trusting Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior, taking that next step of baptism, stepping into the baptismal waters. The waters didn't save him, Jesus saved him. But the waters are a great representation of what Jesus Christ has done for us. How he's forgiven us of our past and is a glorious future ahead. And so I wonder today, is there one in the house or is there one online that's never surrendered over to the Lord Jesus? Today might be the day. If that's you, if that's you, the Spirit of God is stirring, moving in your heart, right where you're at, would you cry out to him, dear Jesus, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, and today I believe that you are the Savior. I repent of my sins. Forgive me of all my sins. I trust in you completely. I believe that you came to this earth, you died on a cross, you were placed in a grave, and you rose victorious for me and for the world. And starting right here, right now, I commit to following you all the days of my life. And if that's your prayer, would you thank him for saving you? Would you thank him for saving you? And in just a moment, we're going to sing this song. And as we sing this song, we're going to invite you to move as the Spirit of God leads you to move. There's going to be men and women, different corners of this room. There's a host online. And we want to come alongside and we want to pray for you. If you made a decision to follow Jesus today, surrender your life over to Jesus today. When we start singing this song, would you be the first to step out of your seat and move forward? Come to the back and allow someone just to pray with you and to celebrate your decision. Perhaps you're here today. You know that Jesus is Lord. You've, you've made that profession of faith, but, but perhaps you've wondered. You've strayed away. And today you would just simply hear the voice of the Lord saying, Welcome home. If that's you, would you commit to following Jesus? As we begin singing, would you have the courage to step out of your seat? Come to one of these men with men and ladies with ladies and, and just say, would you pray for me? Maybe there's someone here today that's, you're feeling a burden. You're looking at a mountain surrounded by a storm find yourself with a great decision to make would you allow someone to pray for you whatever your decision is today would you move as the spirit of God leads you to move Lord Jesus we love you all because you first loved us we thank you Lord we respond in faith today I pray that you would help us to be men and women of great faith Discovery Church be made up of men and women of great faith. Lord, take us to new heights that we've never known, that we couldn't even dream of because here we are wholly surrendered to you, Jesus. And we just say thank you for your great grace, your great mercy. We ask this in your name. We say amen.